Hello and welcome to another episode, ladies and gentlemen, with me, Loki, the old crow. And I'm here with yet another game from the Facebook Community Cup. And we have a treat for you today, ladies and gentlemen. We have Brandon Reardon, 2007, the tournament's founder. And what a tournament has turned out to be, ladies and gentlemen. Um, counter, counter revolutionary being his adversary. We've seen games from these players previously in in the tournament Brandon Reardon uh, solid player solid fundamentals um, excellent early aggression counter counter revolution will be that guy you remember who chose samurai um, it was twice or three times and each time rolled his enemy with uh, with just masked samurai and I, I was I was stumped by it when I first seen it I was like how how do you defend against something like this? I offered the idea that perhaps early aggression may be the key. Stop him getting down them safe castles that we saw before. Um, and and stop him eventually getting to those samurai. And therefore he can't roll you over. Um, and uh, we have Brandon Reardon here. Who, is, who has had some very solid um, early aggression strats going down. Force drop there by the looks of it by Brandon to get that extra... Vil queued. Four drops where you grab a load of them and you send them back to the TC with whatever the resource they have. It's usually food in the early game. Um, but he chose to garrison there. He's probably got the garrison on hotkey. Ball law coming in. Under the TC. Nice. Counter, counter, not. Oh, now he goes for the ball. What pop is he at? 13 pop. Not a bad ball or at all. Not many on woods so far. So let's have a look at the sieves. So obviously you probably guessed by now the map is Arabia and the map is a uh, two player. As you'd expect from a two player game. What strikes me though is how close they are. Look at the size of the map. Look at the size of the map. And they're sort of like huddled together fighting over one corner. It's very, very interesting. This will play straight into the hands of of uh, early aggression. So anyway, let's get into the sieves. Uh, I'm going to get guess counter is Japs. Uh, we've got Brendan Ridden as Huns. Good uh, good scout rush there, potentially on the cards. And we have uh, Red, counter counter, as the Japanese, yes, as expected. So he's probably going to hit that... Uh, Samurai swarm up as he drops another ball. That's that's decent lore again. Not sure what's going on here. Oh, it's that ostrich. He... Oh, okay, okay. He's done some pro strats there and pushed an ostrich in and and uh, got it close to the TC. GG there, GG. I'd like to see that. I got. I've not. I'm not. I don't even try and do that at this stage. I don't even try and do that unless they're super close. But I'm sure they built in a new bit of code recently that says they have to spawn X amount of tiles away from your TC. Um, yeah, so as normal, um, I'm just gonna sort of flick through the early earlier stages here. Not really much to comment on. Both players solid uh, fundamentals. A uh, little bit of a war going up there for Red. Is he expecting early aggression? Has he seen the video? Has he done his homework? Um, that's a lot of lot of vils on uh, on berries there for blue. That is a lot of uh, eleven. Not, oh, here we go. Two scouts out. One's obviously the original scout, and the other one is going around being lethal as all get out. In the pack here, we look. It looks like a lame. It looks like a red took a a goat from blue and then sent it to the edge of the map because he didn't think he'd be able to get it back to his base. You think back to that ostrich lorry did. Maybe that's 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 a pretty good play really because that gets you a scout at least, and they're well on the way to another scout. And you can see, obviously, Red hasn't took that. Hasn't took his ostrich. But like, if I see a cluster room together, I like to, I like to put middle down. So I'm just a bit of a noob. Well, a lot of, a lot of one. A little bit of pressure now coming from Blue. Trying to force his man off gold. Attacking that, attacking that wood camp. But look at that. Counter, counter. He's got a few spears just lurking here and there. It's one over here. Two over here. He's lurking around trying to defend his rules from this uh, scout attack. That's a 
decent counter really and the scouts are going to get taken down as blue starts producing different units he's going into spears and then archers archer into um Horse Archer, but more frequently Knights, is a pretty um, standard play for uh, Huns going into Feud Lage. And it looks like both players are looking to get into the Feud Lage. Uh, get into the Feud, get, get into the Castle Lage, sorry. Yeah, um, Cavalry Archers and Knights in the Castle Lage, not the Feud Lage. Apologies, I was getting too into the game there. It's a, it's a line you always have to walk. It's a very fine line. Sometimes you just get carried away in the... In the thinking about what you would do in certain situations. Here we go. Scouts going to get it up there, and not only that, they're limited there by because because they've grouped together. Their their speed is limited with to the spears. This is a really good engagement for it. This is really good. He just needs to micro it. He needs to micro attack that scout. Send the vills in. Yeah, you kill them all. But very little eco damage there done by that that last raid. Um, as Red seems to want to keep on his production of farms here, he's got 13 going. Standard fast castle, as I am led to believe, is eight. But neither of these are going fast castle anymore. They've committed a little bit of military in, but it is going to be essentially a race into the castle age. What Blue doesn't want to see is when he's coming in for another raid or another scout is. Um, my my prediction is Count is going to go for a, a, a very sort of uh, defensive castle. Smart money would be somewhere around here. Protect that gold. Start encroaching upon this stone that you're going to need. Here comes another raid. To what end though? Are they going to get that bill pick? Nope. Excellent play by Red there. You've seen some really good defensive play by Red to be honest. Um, Blue looks to be slightly um, back footed. As he sends out the little army, he's, he's got together 10. He's got 10, but it looks like it might be a little bit more than what Red has to offer right now. Blue taken aback by probably the defensive uh, skill uh, by Red, and then as Red sweeps up the, the remainder of, of his uh, of his forward military, got a single villager, Bob, Bob versus Spearman. For some reason, Spearman are going to absolutely batter him. We've got them upgrades. We've got them upgrades. Non-upgraded spears are really nothing to be worried about if you've got villager and you've got loom. Um, I'd, I'd take an engagement <laughs> to be honest, uh, but obviously as as the as you tech up and get the researchers, they become a little bit more dangerous. And then that that to me looked like an unwinnable fight by the villager, as that scout cab's now going to get picked off. What's good though is the blue has seen the red is going into spears. Because he quite rightly predicted that Huns are going to go for Scout Cav. And they've took the direct counter with mostly archers there. Eight archers, three skirms. Skirms is obviously uh, to counter any archers that Red may, mike, Ray, mike? Red may make. Why was that a tongue twister? Um, Red is slowing down on all production now. He could go into Castle Age. He needs to click into Castle Age, really. He needs to click into Castle Age now, but Blue was... Is, is Red... Is Red even there? Yeah, no, he's, he's sending Vils. Red's going to... Yeah, this is going to be bad for Red. It's going to be very bad for Red. As Blue puts down a strange watchtower. I'm going to take him off that wood, but he's already at this wood. I guess it sort of limits red to this bit of wood here, and if you've got archers, you can sort of deny that later on in the game. A lot of gold going down for, for red um, as he goes into the castle age. Why would he be getting so much gold? Potential is, I'd say, market and buy stone, put down your castle. Because obviously, um, counter counter likes those samurai, and it's, it's going to be wanting to get them out at some point. There's blues just going around and absolutely just causing mayhem behind the scenes okay there's there's still villages working for red I mean there's a lot of gold as we've already covered 13 on gold but it's not taken from this wood and it's not taken from this stone how far is blue off castle age blue isn't too far off castle age oh blue's already researching castle age no red 
the heck? Oh yeah, Red's getting into Castle Age. And Blue's not too far from Castle Age. Get it together, son. Get it together. Interesting tower. Um, it's baited two units in. Whether that's... Whether that's um, a good trade, I don't know. Blue must see that... Uh, yeah, Blue's seen that Red's gone into Castle Age. He's going to have to follow him. In order to... Maintain this position. There goes the market. The market's coming up in Castle Age. My guess is that he needed. He knew he needed it before. He probably should have put it down. No, it would have been probably best to put it down here. Yeah. Because it's forced, forced the enemy to go around. And stick that. You could then get a bit more creative with the castle. The castle's going down. The castle's going down. And from here, Red potentially could pull it back. Let's have a quick look. 30 vils to... Oh, 30 vils to 50. It's a tall order for Red to pull it back. He's going to get that castle up there. He did do a bit of market play there. Sold some gold. Bought some stone. As Blue is starting to take him off this little bit of wood here. For that wood it's going to be difficult to expand. Castle Age Blue is coming up as well. Sam First Samurai being created. Now if Samurai can bridge the distance between... Um, the archers, they will make an absolute mess of the archers. However, it's closing that distance and maintaining enough HP to do some damage. It looks like they've closed in. But at the same time, Blue's now pressuring over here. So I've taken them off this wood here. Perfect, perfect play there. Perfect, uh, I would say, perfect strategy. Limiting the expansion. Wood, arguably the most important resource in the entire game. So without wood, you don't get anything. Samurai have to retreat because they just don't move as fast. But it's done well in in basically turning back Blue's forces there, as Blue continually makes the tower. They're not going to last very long against the samurai, but uh, he's making towers towards at the heart of Red's eco. That's going to cause some distress, no doubt. Cab archers in the wings. Big army, big army ready to go. It's looking it's looking bleak now for Red. Oh, he's, make, he's getting like mixed success here, here with his samurai. I don't think he's going to be able to get enough of them up in order to sway the game. Crossbow's out now for, for, for Blue. And that's going to turn this into a bit of a poor engagement for Red, I think. He's just going to get shot down. Damage being done by red, but ultimately you would take that trade as blue in blue's position because he knows that at this point he's got red's eco suppressed and he can't produce a lot of samurai. So what he does is take the engagement, take the samurai out, and then he knows the red's going to struggle to replace him. Red genuinely seems stunned at the moment, just play, producing skirms and. Uh, village, uh, villager as blue builds up even bigger army while pressuring with the same with with the same army that he's had going now for a good sort of 10 minutes or so blue's going to continue to he's already he's already forced this this to come away from over here you need to get a second tc down in my opinion second tc down Maybe here or here. It's the, the, either neither of them are very good locations, to be honest. But in this situation, there isn't going to be many. They get a second castle down. Wall off here. You may you may wall off here. You may actually actually buy yourself some time there. But the, the problem is here is that the units that Red is it being able to produce, even though they're the direct counters to these archers and there's a couple of skirms in there with it three skirms in there with it is that it can't mass enough to just do that damage and uh, force him back as blue looks now to uh, really press his advantage with the knights and the scout and the scout cavalry and the cavalry archers problem is then this isn't a force that would take down a, a castle so Blue is limited in his ability to come into this way. Perfect, perfect unit choice here for uh, the TC. Literally one range in it, six to seven. 
That means the TC, even when Garrison cannot fire back at it, get that second one involved. Meanwhile, Blue is raiding here, and you got to think to yourself now that things are looking very bleak for Red. Red's going to go for a little bit of a, a raid himself, as he's really, really under the cosh. Two TCs from Blue. Now we're seeing a defensive castle try and put up. Red's still on one TC. Has a castle denied by the looks of it as well. I think I'm pretty sure that um, Blue cancelled that to get his stone back. Could play there from Red would be to attack it and take his foundation out. Lose all his all his uh, stone. But to be fair, when you got this knocking at your door and this knocking at your door, are you really going to be looking at the three or four samurai that are, that you've gone to raid with? Doing a little bit of eco damage here, but it's probably too little, too late. This is a bigger win. The fact that he gets blue to turn around, face these three samurai, giving giving red a little respite. But at this point, I'd, I'd imagine it's GG. The last samurai get absolutely demolished while trying to take down a lumber camp. A tactical lumber camp. A little bit of villager movement now from Red. Where's he going? Is he going straight back to the uh, wood pile? Go straight back to the wood pile. Let's take a look at Blue's re uh, Red's resources. He is out of luck. He's about to lose his TC. He's not got the, st the, the wood for the next one. That's probably why he's heading to that wood line there with 14 bills. Bang it there, but I think it's probably too late. He doesn't know Blue's going into Imperial Age, but look at that. Castle is def obviously denied. Blue goes up his own castle. Mass exod exodus from Red here, and that that castle is going to go down as well. I'd imagine, especially if it hasn't got murder holes. Tarkan's out now for for Blue. Blue gets into the Imperial Age. Surely it's over now. Look at the score lead. It's three three k in it. Tarkan's pretty interesting units. They uh, do bonus damage to buildings. Red in a really bad position. You need to get that. You need to get enough wood together to get a market to trade off some of that gold. Try and try and do something. But to be honest, it's you're you're in a position now where it's pretty much GG. Is the Tarkins the Tarkins gonna get out by them samurai? Obviously, the samurai get a bonus first all unique units, get them regarrisoned, but then bam, trebuchet. You can't do anything against trebuchet. If you haven't got units of yourself by yourself, is he going to call it once that castle goes down? Increase the speed a little bit. <laughs> Watchtower's going down. Outpost rather going down and he's caused the GG. GG fellas, masterful game there by Blue. Let's take a look at the stats. Military, economy, society, and total score go to Blue. Technology and society it goes to red. Let's take a look at a close look into the military. Uh, almost two to one there for uh, blue. Uh, red obviously coming off the worst. Buildings raised 21 to three. That's seven. Seven to one, I think. Um, largest army is 48 to 15. That's one thing that was quite remarkable about this was uh, blue's ability to maintain economic control and um, military like expand the military and then use it to suppress red's economy um you don't normally see such good balance play at, the, at this level remember it is a low elo uh tournament um uh, but I, I was, it was impressive to see i don't think i, I probably wouldn't I, I wouldn't have been able to defeat him at all i don't think uh on that on that kind of form economy uh not surprisingly because of the two tcs the extra bills uh, goes to blue convincingly pretty much across the board with the exception of stone technology we've got a 10 minute funeral age for blue which is great uh, 24 minute castle age for red that's where he potentially got to turn the tide a lot of damage was done at that, at that point but it was recoverable um, imperial age only one person to make it that's blue map explored goes to red and research count also goes to red Society, villager, obviously the villager difference there is significant, it's uh, over 2 to 1. 
Total cast was one each. Obviously, red got one denied. The blue kind of got one denied, but was able to get it back without losing any resources, which is kind of the whole point of the, the thing anyway. Quick look at the timeline. You can see here, blue starts building up his military a little bit in advance of red and was able to get a little bit of economic disruption up. And because of the mobility of the scout cavalry, uh, it was able to harass, harass, harass. And then this is the part where he turns it into victory, which is when he's, he's building his skirms and his archers. He gets taken aback a little bit, obviously, and then he starts building his skirms and his archers maintains like, a good level of military and uh, takes good engagements, as you can see. This is pretty much just an ever-expanding line here, um, whereas reds is much more pronounced in its in its production peaks. But thank you very much to both players. I'm looking forward to seeing the next game. And uh, I'd just like to say that covering this cup has been really good. Um, my voice is somewhat going back to normal now. Uh, so there should be a lot less sniffles and coughs. I'm um, looking forward to covering the quarterfinals, semifinals. And I might have something a little special for you in the grand finals. Uh, so yeah, take care everybody. And I'll see you on the next one.